Creighton Basketball on KMTV, your Action 3 news station. Brought to you by Lexus of Omaha. This afternoon, we kick off another season of Creighton Blue Jay basketball on KMTV Action 3 News. And what a game we have for you. The Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Creighton Blue Jays meet for the 45th time. Good afternoon, everybody, from the CenturyLink Center in downtown Omaha. I'm Travis Justice. My color commentator again this year is Nick Vaughn. Nick, you're a former Blue Jay. You grew up in Lincoln. You know what this matchup is all about. Yeah, it's a really intense game. Growing up in Lincoln adds a little bit of interesting dynamic for me. But I played in big conference games. I played in big conference championship games. And this game is as intense or more intense than any of those games. This is going to be a really fun environment today. I tell you what, you have two teams today that have different emotional states. Creighton is coming off an emotional win at San Diego State. Nebraska lost at home on Wednesday to Wake Forest in that Big Ten ACC Challenge. Yeah, lost on a last-second layup with about three seconds left. And for a defensive-minded team like Nebraska is, to give up a layup at the end of the game is really disheartening. You're going to have a very hungry and feisty Nebraska basketball team today. And on the other side of the ball, Creighton's playing fantastic. Big win on Wednesday night at San Diego State. They win 85-83, played great. At one point, down 17 points, make a big comeback. This team's playing fantastic basketball right now, and they're in a great groove. Time now for our players to watch, brought to you by Lexus. First for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Bo Spencer. He's a transfer from LSU, and he's done everything the Huskers need him to do. Well, Lance Jeter, senior departure, needed someone to fill his shoes, and Lance, or excuse me, Bo's done a great job doing that. Stepped in. He's a shot manufacturer. He's the catalyst offensively. Leads them in scoring. Leads them in assists. He needs to play well in a tough environment today. It's starting to sound like a repetitive record, but when you talk about the Creighton Blue Jays, you it all starts with Doug McDermott. The super sophomore continues to get it done night in and night out. Yeah, he's Creighton's most improved player. He's in a great rhythm right now offensively. He's had four straight games of 25 or more points. He's playing fantastic basketball, shooting 63% from the floor. He's unselfish. He works hard. He's going to have a big game again. The Doc's going to have his hands full with number three, Doug McDermott. What does this series come down to? Well, lately it's been about home court. The home team has won the last six meetings in this in-state rivalry. It should be a good one as we get the Huskers and Blue Jays Coming up next on KMTV, Action 3 News. And they've turned the lights down at the Century Link Center. That means it's time for the starting lineups. First for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Coming into the Century Link Center today with a 4-2 and two record. They've lost two of their last three games. Watch super guard Bo Spencer. The transfer from LSU leads the team in scoring at 16 points per game. The other guard positions for Nebraska, Brandon Richardson, a fifth-year senior, and Dylan Talley getting the start today. The man in the middle is Jorge Brian Diaz, and at the forward spot for the Huskers will be Brandon Ubell. For the Great Blue Jays, undefeated on the season, 6-0, going with Grant Gibbs, Yahens Vanagon, Antoine Young, Gregory Echenique, and the super sophomore out of Ames, Iowa. Doug McDermott. The Huskers are coached by Doc Sandler in his sixth season in Lincoln. He's got 93 wins and 73 losses with the Huskers against Creighton all time. Three and two. For the Blue Jays, coached by Greg McDermott. He's in his second season on the Hilltop. 29 and 16 overall with the Blue Jays. Of course, a ton of Division I experience was at Iowa State before he was here in Omaha, Northern Iowa before that. All time against Nebraska dating back to his days at Iowa State. Six and three against the Cornhuskers. Time now for our keys to the game. Here's Nick Ball. Let's start with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. First of all, I think tempo is going to be really important. That Doc likes to get them out and run and transition at times, but I think a lower scoring game gives them the best chance to be successful. They're going to have to guard the three-point line. The Jays are shooting 45% from beyond the arc as a team. They have four Creighton players shooting better than 50%. Then they got to contain Doug McDermott. We talked about him. He does it all. You got to slow down McDermott. And for the Creighton Blue Jays, they got to share the sugar. Jays are averaging 22 team assists per game. They got to continue that unselfish mindset. And then they got to get out and run. They're Doc's really good in the half court defensively. They can try and beat them down the floor, get this game at an ump tempo pace. And they got to contain Bo Spencer, leads them in assists, leads them in scoring. Those are your keys, Travis. Thanks, Nick. This is just the second true road game for the Huskers on the season one earlier in the year at USC, 64 to 61. Now, are you ready for this? Nebraska's not won two non conference road games since 1998 and 1999 season. 
It's been a while. The Huskers struggle on the road in the non-conference, but when you look at this Husker team that has come to the Century League Center today, it might be the most talented Doc Sadler's had. They returned four starters, and the guy that stepping in to start's their best player. That's the way I look at it in Bo Spencer, but they are an experienced group. They understand what Coach Sadler wants. Defensive-minded, toughness, grind you out, execution offensively. They're Doc's most talented team, as you said, but Bo Spencer gives them a chance to really take it to the next level. The Blue Jays 6-0. They've been challenged on the road. They've been challenged at home. We'll see how they come off the emotional win, battling back from 17 down at San Diego State in one of the toughest places to play in America. They're back at home in the friendly confines of the CenturyLink Center where all time they are 119 and 21. And the opening tip goes to the Blue Jays. Watch Jorge Brian Diaz guarding Gregory Echenique and see if they'll try and get him away from the basket and make him guard. Gregory Echenique. Had a shot blocked by Diaz. Goes out of bounds, gonna to belong to the Huskers. Oh, they called it on Echenique going after the, the rebound. A guy who's been foul prone in his career here as a Rutgers transfer. There they just tried to isolate Diaz, make him guard. Whether you're gonna take him off the bounce or bring him away from the hoop and make him defend ball screens, you gotta make that Jorge Brian Diaz defend. So that's the first foul on Echenique. This is Spencer being guarded by Antoine Young. Now to tally. Dubell with the weak side rebound. They see the clock, five on the clock. That did not hit the rim. Shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. Just an outstanding defensive possession for the Creighton Blue Jays. You got to be patient defensively when you're going against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They will have 25, 30 second long possessions before they take a shot. Excellent sign to see Echenique be able to guard Diaz one on one on the post. Good job walling up. That's a good sign for the Blue Jays. The Huskers have wanted to speed things up this year. Is that the approach you take against the Blue Jays? I, I, I don't think so. I don't think they want to get this game going at a frenetic pace. There's a turnover by Creighton as Grant Gibbs called for the walk. Full court pressure there, trying to just get the ball out of Antoine Young's hands. Ultimately live, lands in Grant Gibbs' hand, the Gonzaga transfer, and as he goes down, he travels with the ball. Still waiting for our first score of the game. Diaz with it now. Oscar's not afraid to be patient. Diaz challenges Echenique, and the offensive rebound going to go to the Huskers. Nebraska catches a break and a fresh 35. It's always frustrating and disheartening here. Give up a second opportunity for the Blue Jays, but good hustle and effort by the Cornhuskers. Spencer kicks it out to Richardson. Brandon Richardson off the mark. Gets a knee game with the rebound, and here come the Blue Jays in transition. This is where they got to get out and run and convert. Doug McDermott almost underneath the basket. His court awareness is just simply amazing. His hands and his touch around the rim, fantastic. Good rim run for McDermott. It's what he seems to do, get early, easy baskets to get himself going. Make no mistake about it, although Bo Spencer is their catalyst, they definitely want to throw the ball inside to Ubell and Diaz. McDermott with the rebound. That was with seven on the shot clock. Here come the Jays again. Antoine Young, a little one-hander with the left hand. There's that pick and roll there. They're going to do that all night long. The Creighton Blue Jays will get Ubell and Diaz away from the hoop and make them go. 4-0 early at the CenturyLink Center. It's beautiful by Echenique, just walling up. Now 0 for 3 going against Gregory Echenique, one-on-one -on -one in the post. You see so many teams have to come with a double team, and he gets called with a three-second violation. And you can see what the Huskers are doing since Echenique picked up that early foul, challenging him inside to see if they can get that second one on him. Diaz called with a three-second violation, so turnover on the Huskers.
Good hands from Richardson denying Antoine Young. And the foul. Brandon Richardson. He seems he's been around forever. <laughs> Fifth year guy. <laughs> Certainly has been in Lincoln for a, a long time, but nice hands there and the good finish. Antoine Young set to take the charge. A little Euro step off the glass and one. Something that my Creighton teams, we would do against Coach McDermott is do all we could to deny the point guard the basketball because it's really important for Antoine Young to be able to enter the offense because they run a lot of sets. There you can see Brandon Richardson not letting Antoine Young get the ball, ultimately steals it and goes and lays it in. This is going to something something they do all game long here. Gives with it, gives it up to Antoine Young. See, that's important for Antoine Young to be able to trigger everything to get their set started. So there's that ball screen with Diaz, the overhelp and the three. That shot will be there all game, Travis, because the way Doc Sadler approaches things defensively, and he's been fantastic in the half court, is no paint touches. They'll overhelp and give up the kick out three. Bo Spencer, his first shot of the game is a trifecta. Huge for him to have a big game for Nebraska. He's kind of that floor general in a tough road environment. You need your point guard to set the tone. Turnover by the Blue Jays. Here come the Huskers. Spencer out leading the pack. Pally takes it coast to coast, calling for a charge. We got a timeout on the floor. 15.50 to go in the first half. Blue Jays up by one. Back to the Century Link Center after these messages. Nick, you like what the Blue Jays could do right here offensively. Well, Doc Sadler's basketball team's defensive are going to overhelp. See Spencer come in and stop the drive, get a foot in the paint, keep it out of the paint, make Antoine Young kick it out for a three. This shot will be there for the Blue Jays all game long. And Managa, the Canadian Red Bull, buries the triple. Got to be willing to make that pass as Creighton has been all season long. Again, Fourth nationally in assists, 22 per game, and that shot will be there. Both teams with three turnovers early on. Yeah, like I said, atmosphere is going to be electric all game long. They're both feeling each other out. I think a huge sign is that Echenique was able to guard Jorge Brian Diaz one on one in the post. Diaz with three touches, two missed shots, and a turnover. That's a great sign for Greg McDermott and a concerning sign for Doc Sadler. Blue Jay basketball. And into the game is Austin Chapman, the freshman out of Texas. Nicknamed Dash. He has got some speed to him. He has got excellent speed and quickness, and a guy that likes to set the table and get his teammates involved. Big minutes now for him going against a senior in Bo Spencer. There's a little bit of nerves there. We belong to Nebraska. Sometimes when you're young, Travis, in a big game, you, you want the ball out of your hands as soon as possible. And you saw that there. Ball got swung to Chapman. A uh, ball screen was coming, and instead he tries to pass it to McDermott, who was going to set a screen and creates a turnover. You got to want the ball as a young player. Tony McCray into the ball game for the Huskers. He's a fifth year senior as well as Tally can't finish. Echenique with the rebound. Now here come the Blue Jays. Greg Gibbs back to Madigan for three off the front of the rim. Pass was a little off target, a little low. Spencer calls for the charge. Look at Austin Chapman just get in there and take the charge. You've seen three Blue Jays try to take charges. You have Antoine Young try and he gets called for a block. You have Madigan take one and now Chapman takes one on Bo Spencer. The big momentum changing plays. Substitution for Nebraska number two. David First Rivers foul on Spencer. And those are the plays there where I think Nebraska does need to be opportunistic in transition, Travis, but you got to really be careful on trying to get out and run with the Blue Jays. Creighton's averaging 88 points per game and shooting a ridiculous percentage from the field as a team, 52% as a team. David Rivers into the ball game for the Huskers. Nebraska pressing and giving the Jays fits. And yeah, the pressure's bothered Creighton here so far. A little bit surprising. Usually Nebraska known as a team that won't get extended much further outside that three-point line. There's the foul on Rivers, his first. Grant Gibbs, number 10 for Creighton Gonzaga transfer. I think he is, much as Bo Spencer's kind of been the difference for the Nebraska team this year, I think Grant Gibbs is the difference for Creighton this year. He's 
Creighton's best passer in the half court on the season. 33 assists, seven turnovers. Great field, number 10 for Creighton. Four straight games for Gibbs with six assists or more. It may not shut up in the show up in the scoring column. Down low and with authority. Again, making Diaz guard away from the basket. Recovering on the roll. Nice pass from McDermott. And Echenique flushes it. Got an offensive foul as Managa fought over the screen. And gets in front of Caleb Walker. And Walker with a little bit of a shove and a little bit of an acting job from Managa. Returning to the lineup for Nebraska, number three, Brandon Richardson. Ethan Roggy, who had a great game at San Diego State, checking in for the first time, and so is Avery Dingman, the freshman out of Missouri, a three-point specialist. He's shooting better than 50% from downtown. A guy that was a redshirt candidate and kind of played his way into the rotation has really done a good job shooting, but 34 for Creighton has done a really nice job shooting the ball. Chapman can't finish. Dingman's going to be on the baseline. Out of bounds, going to be belong to Nebraska. I think number zero, Tony McRae for Nebraska is going to be really important this game because of his versatility at the power forward position. When they're playing Rocky here and McDermott at the same time, he's going to be really important offensively and defense. There he is knocking he down a shot. His name. Tony McRae pulls the Huskers within one. Although Bo Spencer is going to have to make plays, I think Tony McRae has to have a big game for Nebraska if they want to win. The double team on Doug, he can't finish. Here come the Huskers looking for their first lead of the game. Richardson in transition, over to Walker. Out of bounds. Gonna be Nebraska basketball. Active on the boards there. Good transition, that's a good look for three for Walker. And number 21, Jorge Brian Diaz. Here they have to kind of size down, Travis. See the chess match coming. Nebraska has to size down to play with Rocky and McDermott at the forward position. They go with Ubell and McCray. Ubell kicks it out. There's McCray for three. Offensive rebound to the Huskers. Press 35. Nebraska sets it up. Here's Walker inside of Ubell. Brandon Ubell, nice little hook shot. Can't get it to go. McDermott with the rebound. Ball looks like it got partially deflected out of bounds as McRae's on the line. Those are shots McDermott's been making at a really high rate. Grant Gibbs is into the ball game, as is Will Artino, redshirt freshman out of Waukee, Iowa. Gibbs gets it into Managa. Grant Gibbs. Look at Will Artino. He's shooting at a 73% clip because he's getting nice little putbacks like that. Rotation rebounding. Gibbs draws the help on the drive. Leaves the open front of the rim for Artino. Nice tip in. The difference in this year's team from last year's team for Creighton getting out and trying to take away passes on the wing. In and out as Walker's shot can't fall. Roggy on the blocks. Kicks it back out. Managa. Just outstanding rotation though for Nebraska. Looks like they had a pretty vulnerable in a handful of spots. Creighton did, and Nebraska rotates and jumps out. Foul was on Caleb Walker. We got a timeout on the floor. Blue Jays holding on to a three-point lead. Low scoring affair at the Century League Center. They're going to be back right after this message. Uh, KMTV, Action 3 News. This is the first of eight telecasts on KMTV Action 3 News this season. Our next telecast coming up. On Saturday, as the Blue Jays on the road in Philadelphia to take on the St. Joe's Hawks, that's going to be an 11 a.m. tip. 
That's going to be a good one as the Blue Jays battle the team out of the Atlantic 10. Of course, the Big Ten is in the Century Link Center today in the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Great playing three Big Ten teams this year, already with a win over Iowa, Nick. They've got Nebraska today and then Northwestern in a couple weeks. So the Blue Jays schedule looks good as far as when you start looking down the road to what resumes look like. Yeah, absolutely. This non-conference schedule, you had some people like Hubert Davis on the, the Midnight Madness. Someone take some shots at it. I believe it's a fairly difficult non-conference schedule. You have a lot of sneaky tough games there and, and the remainder of the way outside of Houston Baptist, there are no gimmies on this non-conference schedule for, for the Blue Jays. Here trying to get a little pick and pop action for Rogge. Grant Gibbs. A willing passer, obviously wanted to get it back to Rogge, but didn't stop him as he turned the corner. Nice shot from from Gibbs. McCray for three. Artito tips it back out, but it's going to go to the Huskers in a press 35. McCray, fifth offensive rebound for Nebraska, and McCray makes him pay. Rebounding's keeping Nebraska in the game right now. Josh Jones into the ball game, the junior out of Omaha Central. And three state championships at Omaha Central, a great high school player and a streaky scorer here for the Blue Jays. 15 on the shot clock for the Blue Jays. There's Jones. Josh, high marking shot. And usually when he starts off with the make, he has a pretty good game. Yeah, he does. He can heat up quickly. Hasn't shot it great so far this season. Jones only shooting 37% from the floor. But there, a nice one dribble pull up for Josh Jones. It's going to be a foul on Artino. Creighton foul on number 31. First, fresh bodies coming in for Greg McDermott. That would be Doug McDermott, Gregory Echenique, and Antoine Young. Take another look at Artino not ready to slide his feet there. And, and Richardson does a good job. Guards, sometimes you got to come off that ball screen and just attack the high hip of the hedge man and see if you can't draw a foul. Jones going for the steal. 15 on the shot clock for the Huskers. Here's Richardson. You bell. The big fella not afraid to pull it up. Off the mark, here come the Blue Jays. Turnover on Creighton. Doug McDermott was wide open. It's just That's just didn't deliver the ball. Right idea, just didn't make the pass. It's one thing to see the look. It's another thing to be able to deliver it. That's where you'd like to see Josh Jones maybe just run some offense, even though he is open. Try and swing the ball around the perimeter. Turnover for the Blue Jays. With you, Bell and Diaz both in the game right now, do you expect the Huskers to go inside? Right now, Creighton with a 10-2 advantage in the paint. Yeah, no, that's where they want to go. It's just they've come up empty each time. Good Look steal. There. Josh Jones with a steal. Jays have numbers. Jones finishes. Ah! And the home. So he'll go to the line to try and complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Here's the thing about Josh Jones is he will always forget the last play. He's got convenient amnesia. <laughs> there he throws a horrible bounce pass, results in a turnover there. Whoop. Cookies taking you down the length of the floor. No one stops you. Hoop in the harm. Josh Jones making Omaha Central proud. Blue Jays up eight, largest lead of the game at 18-10. Even though he's come up empty, you got to keep on trying to go to Jorge Brian Diaz if you're Nebraska. Spencer, the long three. Big shot. But Coach Sadler was openly upset about how many threes he, Nebraska took against Wake Forest. Shot 23 threes already today. They've shot a bunch at seven. Off of Spencer, going to belong to Creighton. 22 on the shot clock. McDermott's been quiet, Travis. He's hasn't really been able to get into a rhythm yet. He's only attempted three shots. He's got two points. Again, four straight games of 25 or more. And there's a foul on Doug. Oftentimes, that's on the point guard. You have to wait for that screen to get set and then come off it. You can't be coming at him as he's running at the screen, and that's what happened there. McDermott picks up a personal foul.
You mentioned the numbers that Doug has put up. Does he need to put those numbers up for this team to win? I think he, obviously he's putting up 25 <laughs> points. You know, I mean, that, that's a lot. But yes, he does need to score for, for this team because I wouldn't say outside of him there are any other shot creators. Jump ball. Grant Gibbs going at it with Jorge Brian Diaz. Going to be a jump ball. Belongs to Nebraska. Nebraska. Take another look at it. They're doing a good job of collapsing on Diaz. There, Gibbs, very crafty defensively. Tally kicks it out to Walker. Back out eight on the shot clock. Beautiful. Austin Charge Chapman. on Bo Spencer. Austin Chapman has a tendency to try this at least once per game to beat him to the spot. Watch how cat quick he is. Whoop, beat you to the spot. Flop for the charge. Bo Spencer picks up a personal foul. Do you think he, they call it there because the shoulder goes down? Whenever you dip your shoulder and whenever you beat a guy to the spot, you know what was really good at that was Shane Battier was, did a really nice job of that at Duke, but Chapman, so quick, can beat you to the spot and try and take the charge. Off of you, Bell, going to belong to Creighton. And that's two on Bo Spencer. So, huge play. Little run and jump has bothered the Blue Jays a little bit, and it all does is kind of eat clock. Now they're entering offense here with about 18 on the shot clock. Good defense by the Huskers. You know that's going to be what Doc Sadler teams are going to be really good at. Great in the half court defensively. Gibbs with the rebound. Blue Jays with three players around the basket. Chapman kicks it out to McDermott. McDermott. Oh, he can go outside. Shooting 56% from downtown. He's an underrated shooter from beyond the arc. Now the crowd bringing it up a decibel level. 7.50 to go. First half, Diaz. Here he, he's reluctant to try and make a play because he's come up empty. Good it's the follow. offensive put back of the follow over at Janike. They will keep on going to Diaz. That's what they do with the high-low offense. It's predicated on post touches. McDermott kicks it over to Jones inside at Janike. Over Diaz. Can't finish. Going to be off. Gregory, Nebraska basketball, timeout on the floor. We got a good one. It's low scoring, and if you like defense, this is the place to be. Blue Jays 21, Nebraska 15. Back to the Century League Center right after these messages on KMTV Action 3 News. Have not lost a regular season home game to Nebraska since 1997. If you know what happened on that date in 1997, the man sitting right behind the Nebraska bench retired. retired. Yeah, I'll never forget that because Creighton beat the Huskers at the Civic Auditorium, and it was not like not even the paper. <laughs> Nobody mentioned it because that was the biggest story of the day is when he stepped down in 1997. Of course, Nebraska went on to win the Orange Bowl that year, beating Peyton Manning and the Tennessee Volunteers to win the national championship. But in basketball, the Blue Jays have been on a pretty good run since then, and when you look at this matchup, we talked about it in the pregame, the home team has won the last six matchups in this. Nebraska's only won in this building once. That was an NIT matchup back in 2004. NIT matchup, I believe that was when Jake Muehlheisen blocked Blue Nate Funk's shot at the was. end of the game. Nate's going to be mad that I had to mention that, but Jake will pat me on the back when I see him for, for showing him a little bit of love. But, yeah, the, the home court has been the difference in this matchup. There's no question about that. I always love Coach Osborne's response after the 97 season about being national champs. If he thinks they should, he said, well, we won 13 games, and that's all we played. So <laughs> just sneaky, funny, good, dry sense of humor. Just a, a great man. We had an opportunity to talk to him a little well, bit before the game. And, of course, uh, before he went on to be athletic director at Nebraska, he was helping out at Creighton yeah. with uh, Bruce Rasmussen, come up and talk to the coaches on a regular basis. As Richardson goes strong to the hole, they're going to call a foul. I believe on Grant Gibbs. 
Brady foul on number 10, Grant Gibbs. That's his first personal foul. I believe it's on Gibbs as Richardson. Nice little change of pace Brandon there. Richardson Gibbs slides over line. a little late, a little body. Good attack from Brandon Richardson, but back to Coach Osborne. He was he was helping out at practice. It was my senior year for the Blue Jays. He was at practice, at workouts, had various meetings with some of the seniors about leadership and, and how to approach it. Tell you what, when that guy talks, you listen. And uh, he's got instant credibility. And, uh, 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 it was fun to see him around during the, during the fall of that year. Richardson hits them both. Four point Creighton lead, 21 17. Just eating clock here, trying to slow down the game. This pressure is just trying to slow them down. Slow down the Blue Jays. Didn't expect the Nebraska team to come out and do that. Roggy, the quick trigger. Ethan Roggy, he will fire from anywhere on the floor. Hits the three-pointer. Knocked down four at San Diego State. Last year, redshirted with a foot injury. Very, very good shooter. And his release is what's deadly because it's so quick. So quick. Spencer falling away. Bo Spencer. He's fun to watch. That's what I'm saying. Nebraska's lacked a guy that can just create his own shot in the half court. Look out. again. Offensive rebound to the Blue Jays. Maniga pulls it back out. That's where Rocky's deadly. Trail in the play. Chapman was going to pass it to Enchenique. It looked more like a shot, and everybody was starting to block out. Turnover on the Blue Jays. Number Chapman's got to, if you leave your feet, you should probably just shoot the ball, especially when you're in the shooting motion. Players are going to go to block out. I think Chapman's got to be a little bit more willing to take some of those shots. Player, teams are just going underneath ball screens because he's a pass-first guy. He's got to keep the defense on us and try and knock down some of those 15-foot jumpers. Spencer again. Steve Spencer will smell blood with the mismatch on Rogge. Here's Richardson on the baseline. Can't finish. Martino with the rebound. Jay's in transition. Kicks it out to Managa. A little pump fake. That's off of McC McCray. And Doug McDermott comes back into the game for the Blue Jays. Creighton, the, the deeper team, and just relentless in transition there. Pushing it and trying to make plays. Dylan Talley also in for the Huskers. Beautiful. It's just simple. It's not flashy. But to me, that is what makes him special. Get a piece of the paint. Draw the defender. He's so under control. Grant Gibbs, a nice pass to Will Artino. Off of Walker. You see Gibbs showing a little bit of emotion, talking to the coaching staff of the Blue Jays, just kind of the heart and soul of this team, the leader on the floor, the guy that everybody will look for in tough times, Grant Gibbs, coming up big. Martino looks in, he can't get it over Diaz. Turnover by the Blue Jays. Here come the Huskers in transition. The Craig pulls up. In and out. And he's back in again. He's a nice player. He's had an injury play career. And when he's healthy, he's been very good for Doc Sadler. Offensively, it's been a quiet afternoon for Doc McDermott, but he hits one there. Nice job surveying the situation, looking over that inside shoulder. Is the double going to come? It doesn't. Couple crab dribbles, go off the window for two. Talent. Rebound to McDermott. Here come the Blue Jays. Those are the shots I think only Bo Spencer should take for Nebraska in the half court. He's proven he can make those types of shots. I think maybe that's where, when Doc Sadler talks about selfish basketball, it's those kind of plays. Will Artino. Nebraska is going to let him have that shot. Timeout, Doc Sadler. Timeout, Nebraska. We'll What's Doc going to draw up here? For the Cornhuskers. He's subbing in Ubell here. 
Likes to run some baseline screening action to try and throw the ball inside to whether Diaz or U Bell. Watch for some sort of cross screen with a perimeter player and then a down screen for that perimeter player after they set one to try and get a touch inside. Because even though they have not knocked down and converted those shots at the basket, they've gotten good looks. So I anticipate an in inside touch for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. You wouldn't know it. The, the Huskers shoot 34.8% from the field, which, well, they're 21 points, but Creighton's still shooting 57% from the field. It doesn't seem like they've been uh, that hot because they, they make it look easy because they're so willing to share the ball. And that's what we were talking about earlier with that 22 team assist. You're gonna shoot a high percentage when you take good shots in rhythm in the flow of the offense. And that's what Creighton's done such a good job of. And that's what Coach McDermott, I think, has done the best job of with this team and is instilling that unselfish extra pass attitude. Tally. Fight for the rebound. Going to be a jump ball. Going to belong to Creighton. Timeout on the floor. Blue Jays have led by as many as eight. They're up seven now, 28-21. Back to the CenturyLink Center in downtown Omaha right after these messages. All right. Look, KMTV. Action 3 News. Blue Jay fans, young and old at the Century League Center, and uh, Creighton fans happy today. We got to send out a big congratulations to the Creighton men's soccer team in overtime, beating South Florida today in the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament. This means the Creighton Blue Jays advance to the Final Four. It's exciting. Ethan Finley. Time in school history. That's huge. Yeah, Ethan Finley, their stud, comes up big with a goal late. It's great to see. Also in downtown Omaha today, the Creighton women take on number three, Notre Dame. Not a good one for the Creighton women, losing to the Fighting Irish 76 48. Another Valley scores right now. Big game for Wichita State. They're hosting UNLV. Keep in mind, UNLV beat North Carolina, and right now, Wichita State up 60 to 44 in the second half. It's going to be an interesting race in the Valley this year. You've got Creighton, who's picked to win the Missouri Valley Conference. You've got Wichita State, who's loaded. And you've got Indiana State. And yes, when I say Indiana State, the Sycamores have a lot of talent. Went to the NCAA tournament last year, lost in the first round to Syracuse. Wichita State won the NIT. So a lot of momentum for those two programs. Antoine Young challenges Richardson. Can't finish, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, that's a nice job by Antoine Young going with his left hand. Watch him initiate the contact, get into Richardson before he can jump up. A strong guard, senior out of Bellevue West. Doc Sadler with three minutes and four seconds to go. Still has Tally and Spencer in the game. Both have two fouls at this point. Neither one of them can afford to get a third before halftime. You gotta be careful here. If you're Doc Sadler. Antoine Young. It's a both nine point Blue Jay lead. Spencer kicks it back out now to Richardson. 10 on the shot clock. Fans appreciated the defensive effort. Three on the shot clock. Richardson can't get a shot off. He does. In and out. And look at the offensive rebound by Nebraska. Brandon Richardson made that whole sequence happen. McCray right around the Creighton defense. Good offensive possession by the Huskers. And a great defensive possession until you give up the offensive rebound. Seven offensive rebounds for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Antoine Young can't finish. Spencer, there's shoot two. A little, little bit of... Your own medicine there for Antoine Young did the exact same thing that Antoine Young did to Brandon Richardson. Watch how Bo Spencer comes off the ball screen, get into the body of Antoine Young there, and then use his body as a shield to get the ball away and almost comes up with a three-point play. Second foul on Antoine Young, so he'll have a seat probably for the rest of the half. Spencer hits the first one. 
Spence is going to give teams in the Big Ten fits. Nick. He's a nice player. He's got a great pace to his game. Can score in a variety of ways. And a big-time player at LSU. Averaged 14 points a game as a sophomore. Spencer hits them both. Gibbs inside to Echenique. Tough offensive possession for the Blue Jays. Does that a lot, Travis. He loses the ball on the way up, especially when he's going over his right shoulder with his left hand. But credit the Nebraska defense. Huskers have been down by as many as nine. Looking to chip away at it before the halftime break. Walker kicks it back out, Talley. Jorge, Brian Diaz. And then a turnover by the Blue Jays. Good decision for Bo Spencer there. Might have been real tempting to try and pull a quick three. But one on two, given the shot clock, game clock situation, good job to pull it out. Spencer makes it a one-point game. An 8-0 Nebraska run, and Greg McDermott wants a timeout. 30-second timeout for the Blue Jays. It's a nice job for Spencer again. It's the guards that have given Creighton problems driving the ball at the hoop. Bo Spencer is rewarded for his patient decision to not shoot the ball immediately on the Aaron inbounds pass. And a nice run here for Nebraska to end this first half as they've had excellent stick to itiveness when shots haven't been fall. And Bo Spencer has lived up to the hype. He has not missed a shot. Four for four from the field. He's got two three-pointers, give him 12 points on the game. And what I've liked most about his first half is he has not shot hunt at all. He has not tried to play hero basketball, and I think that's something that Doc Sadler's had to work on a lot with him. He's a guy that is a volume scorer, wants to take a lot of shots, and so far he's done a really good job of letting the game come to him, and that's why he's shooting such a good percentage. And like he'll take a seat now because he does have two personal fouls. Two fouls, so David Rivers comes in. Three seconds separates the shot clock from the game clock. I would anticipate Nebraska to switch any ball screen here because they have McCray and Ubell. They can slide their feet here as, as clock winds down. Ten on the shot clock. Here comes Chet. Ethan Rogge. Rebound goes to Grant Gibbs. With three on the game clock. Grant Gibbs hits. Time expires. Blue Jays go to the locker room with a 32-29 lead. Big bucket for the Blue Jays. Nice defense to try and take away. That scouting report trying to get McDermott a touch. Leaves Rogge with a long three. Great rebound from Gibbs. Pivot, pivot. Frees himself up. That's a big momentum shot heading into this halftime break. But nice run from Nebraska here to make this a game. Coming up at halftime, Dave Roberts, Candace Crone, and John Walsh will have your Action 3 News update as well as your first morning forecast update. We're at halftime at the Century League Center where the great Blue Jays on top of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, 32-29. to 29. Welcome back to the Century Link Center. We're at halftime with the great Blue Jays on top of the Nebraska Cornhuskers by a score of 32 to 29. Looking at the first half statistics. And uh, the Blue Jays have the lead in the score department. Look at the assist. The rebound is going to be concerning to Greg McDermott. Yeah, Creighton's done a nice job on their first shot defense, but they've given up seven offensive rebounds and then turned the ball over 10 times. You look at a lot of the numbers, you would think Creighton's 
going to be on top of Nebraska by more than three points, but they've done a really good job of sticking with it. You see there with the graphic, 8-2 to two run in the last 217, kept them in the game. Bo Spencer had a great first half, 12 points, 4-4 four for four from the field. The Blue Jays led by as many as nine, and it was that 8-2 run in the last two minutes and 17 seconds that really got Nebraska back into this. The Huskers not shooting the ball that great, but they're getting it done with defense. They're doing a really nice job defensively for the most part, although Creighton's shooting a good percentage. They're making them work. I think the little three-quarter court pressure has bothered Creighton ever so slightly. It's slowed the game down, and it's made Creighton not be able to get in their sets early in the shot clock. I think that's been a big momentum change in this game. And then, obviously, throwing the ball inside didn't have a lot of success for the, for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, but it was the guards, in particular Bo Spencer here, you see some highlights. Good drive to the basket. Finish over Austin Chapman. Again, did not miss a shot from the field. 12, 12 points, 4 for 4. You see his step back jump shot. Create that space. Something Nebraska's lacked is a guy that cre can create and make his own shot in the half court. Bo Spencer played fantastic in the first half. And then for the Blue Jays, talk about Doug McDermott averaging 23 points per game. Only seven in that first half. Here's a quick two in transition. Able to free himself up. Running the floor. Then Good patience here. Wait for the double team. It doesn't come. Kind of a bluff for recover. And then a nice spinoff of McCray and the bucket for McDermott. Kind of a quiet first half. Had seven points, three of five from the floor. He needs to get going a little bit more for the Creighton Blue Jays. I, I got to be honest with you, it wasn't probably the prettiest basketball you're going to see, but this is a rivalry game. Anything's going to happen, and it's kind of, I think, what we expected out of the Nebraska Creighton game. Rivalry games have a tendency to be low scoring and extremely hard fought, and that's what's happened here in this first half. It's kind of what happens when you play a Doc Sadler basketball team. They're going to chew you up and spit you out, and that's what Coach, uh, Coach Sadler's been able to do and when you start looking forward to the second half um, who has the advantage well you still got to give the edge to Creighton as long as they are able to rebound the ball and take care of the ball they've been able to shoot and score at a high percentage but when you don't take care of it and you give second chance opportunities and you give a guy like Bo Spencer a chance to make plays he's going to burn you I still give the edge to Creighton but Creighton's got to shore up those two areas time now for our meet the Jays segment you want to guess who it is we saw it earlier. It's brought to you by the Nebraska Soybean <laughs> Board. It's, Put me Greg, on the spot. it's Gregory hey. Echenique, the six foot nine, 270 pound junior. He's from Venezuela. He came here via Rutgers, but he's got an interesting story. Of course, he had to deal with the uh, the, the torn the retina, yeah. the, the eye deal, and then he also played this last summer for the Venezuelan national team. He got a lot of good experience this summer. It absolutely, averaged six points per game and five rebounds a game for the Venezuelan national team. He's playing with NBA guys and playing against NBA guys. Got a a lot of experience. I think he's in much better physical shape this year. He's dropped about 15 to 20 pounds, able to be able to run the floor a little bit better. Uh, he's off to a very good start this year, and he's going to be really important for Creighton's success moving forward. Great summer for Gregory Echenique. Of course, the Meet the Jays segment again brought to you by the Nebraska Soybean Board. We're at halftime at the Century Link Center with the Blue Jays on top, 32 to 29. It should be an exciting second half. Nick and I will be back for all the action. You're watching Creighton Blue Jay Basketball on KMTV. Action 3 News. Let's recap our players to watch brought to you by Alexis. And for Nebraska, we talked about Bo Spencer, and he has lived up to everything. He's got 12 points. He hasn't missed a shot yet. Four for four from the field is Bo Spencer. And Doug McDermott, not a Doug-like performance with just seven points, but he still makes so many things happen offensively and defensively for the Blue Jays. He attracts so much attention in the half court offensively. Even when he's not touching the ball, you have to worry about where he's at. Kind of a quiet half for him, as you said, but I expect him to get going early. Look for a set play to try and get him a look from either beyond the arc or a quick post up along the baseline for McDermott coming out of this halftime break. But Bo Spencer was tremendous, Travis. I thought he was the best player on the floor in that first half. Also, Tony McRae, I thought, played well yeah. off the bench. Eight points, did some good things in transition. Uh, I thought he was going to be really important. We'll see how he plays in the second half. 20 minutes of basketball left in downtown Omaha. Good crowd. Friend and foe. <laughs> Look at that, a nice little handshake, too. What kind of rivalry is this, What Nick? is this? Watch that 30 for 30 on Auburn and Alabama. They're trying to punch each other in the <laughs> face. They're shaking hands. Come on. Good turnout by the Creighton student section. That soccer game was canceled yesterday because of the snow. They had to reschedule it for this afternoon. 
doesn't look like that affected this crowd at all. It's, there's a lot of people here. Blue Jays going to start with the original starting five in Echenique, McDermott, Gibbs, Managa, and Antoine Young. Oscar's going with Richardson, Ubel, Diaz, Spencer, and Tally. Nebraska starts the second stanza with the basketball. See if they'll go back to Diaz or if they'll feed the hot hand in both Spencer. Good steal, good activity on the ball from Grant Gibbs. You just tell the Blue Jays want to push the pace. Yeah, they, they are just itching to get out and transition and run. It's where they're really comfortable and really deadly. Gibbs has it blocked. Going to be out of bounds off of Diaz, I believe. Blue Jay basketball. Blue Jays hold on to a 20 on the shot clock. See, Diaz, this is where his length is tough. Trying to initiate contact, but his length is able to eat you up. See if Creighton can't get McDermott a look here. Inside to Echenique. Diaz. Going to be called for the foul. That's interesting. Pretty touchy there. Maybe trying to clean it up inside, set the tone. You always can tell some of the adjusters from the coaching staff on both sides early on. See, good job to create some space, but then pretty touchy there. McDermott misses. Tally with it now. Fifteen on the shot clock. You Bell against McDermott. Little one-hander in and out. McDermott with a rebound. That's going to be a foul on Tally. That's his third. That's big because he's their Nebraska's second leading scorer, a guy that can knock down threes. He's got his hand caught in the cookie jar and gets called for a foul. Here's this, this little pressure that's just bothering him. A little adjustment there to have Grant Gibbs throw the ball in, so you have a point guard basically in essence you're throwing it back to. See if that can help the cause for the Blue Jays offensively. Tally, number four. That's nice. That's his heady play there from Gibbs, recognizing the foul situation. Who's guarding him? Look at him. Just a little jab, refuse the ball screen, sell it with a little bit of a acting job. Nice job from Gibbs. So Tally will have a seat with four personal fouls. Caleb Walker comes into the game. Needs to get rid of it. There he gets the Managa. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Inside, Ubel, good defense of McDermott. Brandon Ubel's really improved his game. Absolutely. I've been really impressed with him in the early part of this season. Looks like he's added a little bit of size to his frame. Really playing well offensively for the Huskers. Spencer made that happen with the defense. Here's the long outlet pass to Bo Spencer. Nebraska with the first two points of the second half. Oscars within one. Really strong guard. Bo Spencer able to just muscle his way in between McDermott and Gibbs and rip, rip the ball away. Ball's a little bit stagnant right now for the Blue Jays. You got to move that, that ball around the perimeter. 15 on the shot clock. Echenique. Challenging you, Bell and Diaz. The big fella, double zero, is going to go to the line to shoot two. He's not, not a very good free throw shooter. No, he's not an area where he's really struggled this year. And you see Nebraska not coming with a double team, Travis, but they're sinking, and everybody's in the paint there, making things really high traffic and not able to make clean 
moves on the block there, and that's bothered Echenique and McDermott. He has to start knocking down his free throws, though. Because he'll get plenty of attempts as the season goes along. He goes one for two. He's 34% shooting from the free throw line on the season. Two-point Creighton lead. Oscars have never led. Out of bounds off of Bo Spencer. Giants Managa got a little piece of it, then it went off of Spencer. Boy, both teams are really competing defensively. They're really doing a nice job of taking away passes and making life really difficult on the perimeter for both teams. Good job by Antoine Young. Antoine, he'll shoot two. That's on Jorge Brian Diaz, second personal on Diaz. Just a little change of pace to freeze you, Bell, from Antoine Young. Antoine Young to the and just shot out of a cannon. And a good job. You don't try and contort your, bo your body and move the ball away from shot blockers. You take it right at their chest. Because the more you move the ball away, as Antoine Young knocks down the first free throw, the more you give a longer player an opportunity to use their length to block their shot. Block your shot. Four point Creighton lead. Diaz with it. Challenging Echenique. Look at the big fellas. Diaz with an offensive rebound and a putback. Echenique just fell asleep on the shot. Needed to create some contact. Good job by Diaz to follow. Antoine Young, Echenique, the rebound, and the putback. Double zero, working for it. Keep an eye on what's going on down low. Echenique and Jorge Brian Diaz going at it. It's a fun matchup to watch. It's going to be a foul on Antoine Young. Breaking foul number 30, Antoine Young. That's his third personal Third foul. personal on Antoine Young. On the second half. See there again, just creating the rotation rebounding because Diaz has to come to help to try and block the shot. Opens it up for Echenique. Pretty athletic move there to catch, stay on his toes, and go right back up. He did a good job of keeping the ball high. Didn't bring it down low so he could finish. Walker for three. Off the front of the rim. Managa with a rebound. Let's see if Creighton can push the tempo here. Good ball movement by the Blue Jays. Gibbs can't get it inside. Timeout on the floor. Blue Jays holding on to a 37-33 lead. We'll be back to the Century Link Center right after these messages. You're watching Creighton Blue Jay basketball on KMTV Action 3 News. Good showing at the Century Link Center. 16,561 to watch the state's only. I guess I can't say that anymore because UNO's Division Nebraska, One now. Omaha, Darren Hansen total... will come and yell at him. <laughs> you know, I'm so used to saying that. But today is a very special moment for uh, Creighton Blue Jay fans because the two millionth fans amazing. attended a game today to watch the Blue Jays here at the Century League Center since this place opened. That's absolutely incredible. You, you were around in the Civic Auditorium yes. days, Travis. Yes. And a lot of people ran and raved about that. But this, this building has really kind of taking Creighton to another level. It's such an attractive perk for recruits. I remember coming on my visit when I was transferring to talk to Coach Altman. He brings me here, at, which was in was the Quest Center, and, and it just blows you away. It really does. I remember when I first started, they, you know, they were only getting two or 3,000 in the Civic yeah. Auditorium. Things started to change rapidly, and the Blue Jays, ever since moving into this building, have been able to keep it up, averaging you know, anywhere from 13,500 to 15,000 a game during a year. It's absolutely amazing as Bo Spencer continues his hot streak. He is so fun to watch. That step back jump shot going left is lethal. There they tried to isolate him. First play of the game, they tried that. Echenique can't finish against Diaz. And there's the foul on double zero. 
Those two are just kind of going at each other here early on. Can't quite score at a high rate either way as Echenique almost finished it with the left hand and then fouls Diaz. That's the second personal foul. Nebraska looking to tie or take the lead. Creighton has led from the start of this game. Here's Spencer with it. Inside to Diaz. We're tied at 37. That's all Bo Spencer. Great hesitation move and dropped to Diaz. Chapman has it swatted away from Diaz. Here comes Spencer in transition. Well, that's good offense, better defense there from Diaz. That was a nice push from Chapman. Walker for three. Nebraska on top by three. Big shot, good inside-out basketball for Nebraska. Turnover again by the Blue Jays. And a foul on Austin Chapman. And momentum has shifted as Nebraska is feeling it right now, up three. It's Creighton's 13th turnover, Austin Chapman's fourth of the game, and Antoine Young will have to check in for the freshman as Brandon Richardson just grown manned him and took it from him. See, he just, nothing fancy about it, knocked it away, and then Chapman compounds the problem by fouling McCray. Creighton against the ropes now. How will the Blue Jays respond? Nebraska's trailed by as many as nine. Both teams have played in close games, so they both have been here. McCray draws the foul on McDermott. Only his second personal foul. McCray's speed and quickness, though. A little face up, wipe through baseline. Watch him here. Face up, just go base, try and go to the other side. Well, that's close. I don't know about that call. Nevertheless, a good Tony attack McCray by Tony McCray. Shooting two. McCray will shoot two. His first time at the line. He hits it. Keep in mind, at San Diego State, the Blue Jays were down 17 points at one point in the first half and eight points at one point in the second half, and they did a great job of weathering the storm, staying calm, and staying together, and they were able to come back and ultimately beat San Diego State. They've been here before. Nebraska now seven for seven at the free throw line. Up five. Largest lead of the game for the Huskers. Just feels like Doug McDermott needs to take this game over, Travis. Seems like he needs to really start being aggressive offensively. He's not a shot hunter, but he might need to think about trying to make some plays here. McDermott held scoreless this half. The foul on Ubel. Nice set play there. A little bit of false action to go back to the other side and throw it in to McDermott. See Ubel having to hold Doug as he did a good job sealing. Bell doing a good job defensively on McDermott. Tough pass by Antoine Young to Managa. Goes out of bounds. Nebraska basketball. It's a nice job by Nebraska getting it out of McDermott's hands and then being able to close out and recover on the drive from Antoine Young. Nebraska causing turnovers. Creighton, their own worst enemy right now with 14 turnovers in the game. They're averaging 10 a game coming into the season. Excuse me, 11 a game. Credit the Nebraska defense. McCray, little air ball. He had good position, couldn't finish. Break for the Blue Jays. Here's McDermott. Can't finish. Doug with the offensive rebound. McDermott. He's got to get going. He's the guy. 23 points per game. Played on Team USA under 19 team. This crowd's loving it now. Loudest the crowd has been all game. You bell inside. Jump ball. Belongs to the Blue Jays. Look at Gibbs. Look at the fire he showed there. Good help off his man. Go and dig it out. Watch. He'll come from behind here. Look at him get a hand on it. The string. Then the go down and tie him up. Beautiful play from Gibbs. The heart and soul of this team was voted team captain before ever playing a minute for the Creighton Blue Jays. 
That shows you what kind of a guy he is. Blue Jays still down three, need a bucket. T. Richardson doing a nice job of denying Antoine Young the ball. This is what rivalries are all about. Close contest. Fans getting into it. Ooh, Miss Gibbs on the slip as they really rotated out hard on a flare screen for McDermott. Ten on the shot clock. Ethan Rogge for three. Going to be on Ubell. McDermott had position. Ubell knew it. Pushed him right out of the way. One of the most underrated things about Doug McDermott is how hard he works without the ball, whether it's posting up or rebounding. Look at him fighting Ubell. Ubell, just a slight push creates the foul. McDermott will go to the free throw line. He's one of the best, 87%. First free throw attempts for number three tonight. To the free throw line for the Blue Jays, shooting one and one, number three, Doug McDermott. Look at Doug follow his own shot, but can't finish. Gets the offensive rebound. Two offensive rebounds for Doug McDermott. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Stick to it of this. The best offensive rebounder is oftentimes the shooter. They know where it's coming off the rim. McDermott puts it in. Out of bounds. McCray with the turnover. Blue Jay basketball. But Grant Gibbs has really been good defensively. And this place will explode with a basket for the Blue Jays. Inside to McDermott against Ubell, the sophomore. Good defense there, got a piece of it, Ubell. The atmosphere inside the Century League Center is just, it's changed, Nick. You can feel it. Spencer to Diaz. Can't finish. McDermott with his eighth rebound. Here come the Blue Jays in transition. To Gibbs. Reverse layup. The Blue Jays back on top, 43-42. What a play by the Creighton Blue Jays. Timeout on the floor. The Century League Center has come alive. We got a great ball game between the Blue Jays and Huskers. Back to the Century League Center after these messages. We'll be a full timeout for the Fort Huskers. This is exactly how they drew it up, right, Nick? Thread the needle, half-court pass gives to the other side, lays it in. The Century League Center crowd, the Creighton Blue Jay crowd wanted it, and they delivered. Gibbs has been tremendous in the second half defensively and gets out and runs and is rewarded with a layup as the Blue Jays now on top by one. This has been a half of runs. Nebraska went on a 9-0 run in a minute and 36. That has been countered by Creighton's 6-0 run in the last two minutes. 11 minutes, 14 seconds to go in the ball game. The chess match between Greg McDermott and Doc Sadler. Two friends off the court. Yeah, they're great friends. A lot of respect for one another. But they want to definitely want to beat each other right now. Grant Gibbs with six points, three rebounds, one assist, two turnovers. He's played 28 minutes so far. He's been really good defensively too, Travis. Doug McDermott already with a double-double for the Blue Jays. But Bo Spencer, who has the basketball right now, has the ability to take a game into his hands and control it. Spencer with 16, looking to make it 19, but he can't finish. Diaz with the offensive rebound. And a foul on Will Artino. Rebounding again, Travis. We talked about it at halftime. How important getting on the glass is going to be for the Creighton Blue Jays. They give up another offensive rebound, then a weak foul for Martino. Three-point play for Caleb Walker. And we have another timeout on the floor. Timeout on the floor. Nebraska is retaking the lead, 44-43. And Walker will be at the line when we come back to Blue Jay basketball on KNTV Action 3 News.
Would we expect anything but a close game between Nebraska and Creighton? In 2008, a 54-52 Nebraska win. 2009, a 67-61 Creighton win. In 2010, a 59-54 Nebraska win. This is what we've come to expect, especially since Doc Sadler has taken over for the Huskers. Yeah, this game's always intense, always, go, always goes right down to the wire. There's no doubt about that. I think we're heading that way, partner. Well, that's fun. No, yeah, this is great. Again, I can't express how important it is that both teams have been a part of these games. Nebraska won at USC in overtime, had to make plays late. Obviously lost a close game to Wake Forest on Wednesday, so they've been there and been in these situations at Creighton. Won a close game at UAB a couple weeks ago, then obviously won a really close game against San Diego State on Wednesday night. And Christopher Neiman is now into the game for the first time for Nebraska. Caleb Walker shooting one. He did not play against Wake Forest. He battled knee issues and, and just injury play. Walker gives Nebraska a two-point lead. So finishes the three-point play. Nebraska's bench outscoring the Creighton bench 15 to 12 at this point. We talked about how Creighton was deeper. We're not seeing it tonight. A little bit of a, some zone from Coach Sadler, something you don't see at all from the, from the Cornhuskers. Gibbs and the harm. Grant Gibbs does so many things. Ties it at 45. He'll go to the line of the old-fashioned three-point play. Take another look at it. Look at the strength and the left hand to finish over Neiman. Beautiful flash into the heart of the zone. Gibbs has been great. He's got three steals on the game. He's got eight points, three rebounds, one assist. See if Nebraska will stick with this 2-3 zone or if they just wanted to try a possession or two and see what they want to do moving forward defensively. Gibbs, just such a cool, calm demeanor about him. Crowd wanting a defensive effort now from the Blue Jays. Holding on to a one-point lead. Coming up on the 10-minute mark. McCray traveled with it. Costly turnover. Under 10 to go now. It's not, it's not great ball movement there. Resulted in a situation where Cray had to go one on one and he traveled. Here we go. 2 3 zone still from Nebraska. Where you can get Gibbs right in the heart of that zone where he was able to score last time. He's so deadly because he can both score and pass. Creighton looks confused here, Travis. Ten on the shot clock. McDermott to Raggi. He missed his opportunity. Three on the shot clock. Antoine Young throws it up. In and out. Look at Grant Gibbs. The offensive rebound has it swatted away from Neiman, but it draws the foul. And a technical foul, I think, on Tony McRae. Frustration. Let's take another look at it. Look at Gibbs just outworking people. McCray looked like he turned and said something to the official. You got to keep your composure. Huge play there as Blake said Gibbs just outworked him. He said something. Tony McCray looks like he said something to Kelly Self. Yes. We have a good crew here today, too. I mean, we're talking massive NCAA tournament experience with this crew. Mike Sanzier now talking to Doc Sadler. Yep, you can see on the offensive rebound, McCray wasn't even really involved in the play. He was a little bit behind Grant Gibbs, and he turned, and you can see a demonstrative move and saying something towards the official. Your officials today are Mike Sanzier, Kelly Self, and Tom Eads. <laughs> Doc, and, Doc and Greg are going to sit and have a little conversation, and they just teed Doc up. Doc better watch it. Well, that's, 
I knew what Doc was doing. The yeah. officials did not appreciate being mocked. He was going over there just trying to have a little bit of fun in a very touchy situation. And obviously the officials are human beings as well. They don't like to be made fun of, but boy, that's so, pretty that's so now, pretty sensitive by the officials to team so up. Two there. technical fouls. You had one on McCray, you had one on Doc Sadler. Are they seeing now to see if that was a that's shooting a foul for or a, a shoot two for Gibbs? I'm not sure exactly what they're looking at to see if maybe there's anything flagrant on McCray, maybe. But it really was just a demonstrative move away from the ball towards the official. I didn't see any foul play by any of the Cornhuskers, in particular Tony McCray. With a one-point game at this point, as much as I know Doc Sadler was trying to be... He's just trying to have some fun. fun. He's great friends with Greg McDermott. Yeah, there was nothing, but was that smart to do right there? Oh, you got, you got to be careful. I mean, I think you got to have an understanding of the situation and your relationship with the officials at that moment. And you take another look at it, see us... McCray's behind the plays. Number zero. Watch the job by Grant Gibbs to go up and get the screen. Then keep your eye on zero. He's going to turn and say something to the official. And immediately a technical foul is called on McCray. So not sure what they're assessing here or meeting about, but that's what the technical foul was. But then Doc Sadler goes over and is trying to have a little bit of fun, and it wasn't it wasn't fun play time for the officials. McDermott hits the first one. You know, I'm not sure if it's a coaching, you got to stay in your coaching box type of thing, or if it was the fact that he did make fun of him a little bit there, but whatever it was, you sure would like to see the refs maybe have a little bit of a so little bit of patience. Doug hit the first two, he gets two more on the double technical. And they will get the ball back. After Gibbs goes to the free throw line. So Doug hits three out of four. Now Gibbs will come to the line to shoot two. And it, uh, the player's got to go and get in the free throw situation now. Boy, just a crazy sequence there. And here's Gibbs so when, at the line. So when that took place, Nebraska with a was down one. Blue Jays going to get six free throw attempts. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. No. Beautiful. And I thought they'd get the ball back, but it was obviously not the case. So now Creighton on top by six. Just like that. And the Blue Jay faithful on their feet. Nebraska's trailed by as many as nine. Come back to lead at one point in this game. See if the Huskers have another run in them. Bo Spencer falling away. Rebound goes to Gibbs. Here come the Blue Jays pushing the pace. Antoine Young back to Gibbs. Inside the McDermott. Turnover by the Blue Jays. Spencer running with it. Beautiful. Ah. Ah. Can't finish. Here come the Blue Jays. Josh Jones. See if he finds McDermott. Look at the pass. McDermott finishes it through the contact. The Beautiful. Foul, number three, Brandon Richardson. That's his second personal foul. Doc Sadler wants a timeout. He finally gets it. He was yelling at Tom Eads. Timeout, a 10-0 Creighton run. And how costly will those two technical fouls come back to haunt the Huskers? It, it could cost Nebraska the game. Got to keep your composure. Just unfortunate for Nebraska, but give credit to Creighton. They've taken advantage of it. Knocking down five of six free throws. They're getting a stop defensively and pushing it in transition. And a nice two-on-one situation there as Josh Jones draws the defense, drops it to McDermott, and McDermott finishes. Just really unfortunate, though, Travis. We were heading for a good finish there, and you never want to see some outside influences affect the game. But it's all a part of it, keeping your composure, understanding the situation. Tony McCray lost his cool, and Doc Sadler just miscalculated the situation a little bit. Can Nebraska respond? And can Creighton put the foot on the throat of the Nebraska I will say this, it spiced it up inside here a little bit, though. Yeah, it did. 
So McDermott at the line. He's got 16 points. Make it 17. Another double-double for Dougie. Nine-point Blue Jay lead, matching the largest Creighton lead of the, of the day. Still plenty of time. The Huskers have come back before in this game. Where you can out yourself, and, and you got to get the ball to the guy you, and Bo Spencer and let him go. Let him go make plays. Spencer. There you go. He's so good. I think oh, in tough times, good. Travis, or Garrett Danielson say this yesterday in the, in the SEC championship game. I think you got to think not plays, but players. And you got to get the ball to the guys that you want to have the ball. And Bo Spencer's that guy. Look at Doug him. Doug Position on the cray. And now Brandon Ubell's off the bench. Brandon Ubell's done a great job on McDermott. McCray can't stop it. Good seal from McDermott and finish with the left hand. Walker. McCray, good position on the offensive rebound and the putback. Josh Jones. And Josh Jones never followed a shot. Oh, Josh Jones with a foul. Number five, Josh Jones. We got a timeout on the floor. You still get a feeling it's going to, maybe Nebraska is going to put together a run. 56 49, 7 15 to go in the game. Back to the Century League Center right after this on KMTV Action 3 News. Welcome back to the Century Link Center. An interesting turn of events, but Nebraska not going away. Down seven, 56 49. Doug McDermott, seven of 13 from the field for the Blue Jays. He's got 19 points to go on with his 10 rebounds. And Bo Spencer has been Mr. Everything for Nebraska. One of two Huskers in double figures. He has 18. Tony McCray also at 12. Blue Jays shooting 46.5% from the field. Nebraska 41.3%. Nebraska still hasn't missed a free throw. Eight from eight from the line. The Jays 13 of 16 for the free throw line. 10 of 13 in the second half. The free throw line has been the best source of offense for the Blue Jays, thanks to in large part the technical fouls by Tony McRae and Doc Sadler. That really has changed this game for the Creighton Blue Jays. But Doug McDermott has exploded offensively and equally as important. I think Grant Gibbs has really changed this game as well, doing a multitude of things. And McCray misses at the line. That's the first miss for the Huskers. McCray now with 13. And Brandon Ubell comes in. He's done a great job defensively on McDermott. As Ubell had a seat, McDermott heated up offensively. Yeah. He's defended Doug McDermott, arguably the best anybody so far this season. Ubell playing with three fouls. Managa for three. John hands Managa wide open in the corner. Huge bucket by the Blue Jays. Canadian Red Bull, a great three-point shooter, better than 50%. Good kick out from Antoine Young. Say play earlier in the game. Over help, kick out three. Ooh. We're gonna call it on Roggy. No, gonna be on Grant Gibbs with the body. Second foul against number 10, Grant Gibbs. That's his second personal second foul. Personal foul on Gibbs. Foul. Nebraska into the bonus. See Gibbs just getting him a little bit with the body because I thought Roggy got a clean strip of the ball, but. Gibbs fouled him prior to that. Walker misses. Tom Eads is getting an earful from Doc Sadler. Obviously still frustrated from the technical foul. Something he's got to move on from, though, now. Talk about that after the game. 
Rocky wide open. Grant Gibbs saw Ethan Rocky wide open. There was nobody within four feet of him. That's because Doug McDermott is lethal offensively. A little roll and replace. And everybody stayed high with McDermott. Opened up the middle of the floor right in the basket. You can see it here on the replay. There is Rocky's the one who set the screen, and McDermott filled to his spot. Everybody stayed with McDermott high, left Rocky wide open for a layup. Rocky should go right to Doug McDermott and say, hey, thanks, buddy, because you're so good offensively, I just got a wide open layup. Right now with his biggest lead of the game at 10, 61-51. Well, we called for it, and we got it. Said Doug McDermott needed to explode offensively in this second half, and he's done that. And with him coming alive, it's opened up a lot of things for Grant Gibbs, for Ethan Rogge. Right. And keep in mind, Dylan Talley has not played since, like, the first three minutes of this yeah, second picked up half. his fourth personal foul early. It's Bo Spencer time. Good pass into Diaz. Almost same situation there, got stuck high. Again, that's one of those things, because Bo Spencer's been so good, you get caught ball watching. Eight-point Blue Jay lead, plenty of time under six. Watch it into McDermott here, got him. Oh, good help from Spencer. That scouting report there, understanding that's a go-to play for Greg McDermott. Rocky took it right away from Richardson. McDermott finishes. 21 points for the sophomore. What a good catch, and then to avoid getting the ball stripped away from Richardson in the finish. Rogge against Diaz. Another rebound for McDermott. Nobody around the basket. Here come the Huskers. Spencer needs to make plays. He's been making them all night for Nebraska. Rogge going to call for the blocking foul. You're right. Just put it in both Spencer's hands. You, you don't outthink yourself if you're Doc Sadler right now. He is your go-to guy, your creator. Just get the ball in his hands. Let him create whether you want a ball screen or not. There he just drives it right at Rogge and draws a foul. One one. Spencer two for two at the line. Miss again, but Ubell with the rebound. Brandon Ubell has been so good. Spencer for three. Huge play. Credit Brandon Ubell. Working for the offensive rebound, kicking it back to Spencer. Big shot for both Spencer because that was very contested three. from Antoine Young refusing the ball screen. Had two screens coming high. Brandon Richardson got caught peeking, trying to get over those screens there. A little left to right crossover. Beautiful from Antoine Young. Antoine Young going to the line. He's perfect tonight, four for four. The senior from Bellevue West. He's worked really hard to improve this area of his game, Travis. Two years ago, he was putrid from the free throw line. And he, one thing he does really well is get fouled. And so it was a tough dynamic for him. And he's gotten in the gym and worked really hard on improving his free throw stroke. So Dylan Talley's back into the game for Nebraska. He's got four. And shot maker and Talley on the floor and now. O'Brien has let Bo Spencer go to work. It's a rebound again from Diaz. 12th offensive rebound for Nebraska. Tally playing with four fouls, brings it back out to McCray. Look at Ethan Rogge just diving on defense. Kick it back out, Spencer wide open for three. Rebound, Grant Gibbs. Managog. Got hands, Managog. Would have taken the three-pointer. What a pump fake. Wide open, two dribbles. Stops, pops good. Shampoo head and shoulders fake for the Canadian Red Bull, and he buries it right over Diaz. Doc Sadler wants a 30-second timeout. Hold on,
He wants a full timeout, but we'll keep it right here because on the next dead ball situation will be the media timeout. So we'll keep it here as it's a Nebraska timeout. 67-56. Creighton doing the little things as they started to pull away. Big miss there. Bo Spencer got a really good look from three. But now Doc Sadler has left himself with zero timeouts now for the remainder of this game. Do you see, look at the shot fake from Managa. Good control. That's Diaz coming at him. So he had to get it up and over him and bury the jump shot. Nice under control play from the sophomore Jahens Managa. Zero timeouts left now for Doc Sadler in the final 347. Could come back to bite him. McDermott with 21. And Bo Spencer with 21 for Nebraska. So we know how to, the players to watch, we know how to pick them. <laughs> hey, no one's too tough to pick, but we certainly nailed those two, right? Nebraska with three players in double figures. Of course, Spencer with 21. Diaz with 10, McCray has 13, Gibbs with 11, the only other player in double figures for the Blue Jays. Be Nebraska basketball. See where Doc Sadler wants to go. You got to make your hay coming out of timeouts here. The set play. Inside to Diaz. Echenike back in. We haven't seen double zero for a while. There's Tally playing with four. 15 on the shot clock. Tony McCray backs up. Tony McCray with a big bucket for Nebraska. Big shot. Nothing doing. Just go make a play. Let's see if Greg McDermott wants to kind of pull the reins back on the Blue Jays here. Eat a little bit of clock. See if they'll have Echenike set ball screens to make Diaz guard. 15 on the shot clock, three minutes to go in the game. McDermott for three. Doug McDermott. He continues to amaze. There's a reason he's on the watch list for the Wooden Award and the Naismith Award. And a blocking foul, gonna call it on number three, Doug McDermott. We got a timeout on the floor, the Blue Jays with a 12 point lead with 2.43 to go in the game. We'll be back to the Century League Center right after these messages on KMTV Action 3 News. Doug McDermott just picked up his third personal foul, but he is our Burton Plumbing player of the game. When the plumbing's hurting, make sure to just call Burton. And what a game and what a second half McDermott has had. He's got 24 points, 9 of 15 from the field, 4 of 6 from the free throw line, 11 rebounds. Absolutely amazing. shoot two. He hits the first one. Spencer now with 23. Ten point Blue Jay lead. All about ball handling and free throws now for Creighton Blue Jays. And he traveled. Good defense by the Huskers, stepping up the pressure. An impressive on-ball defense for the Huskers all game long. Antoine Young just over-dribbled a little bit and traveled. A lot of game left here, Travis. Earlier in the second half, Nebraska went on a 9-0 run at about a minute 43. We've seen the Huskers that are capable of it. Spencer can't finish. Took a contested three-pointer. Yeah, yeah. That's a good observation. You'd rather see Bo Spencer put pressure on the defense and go try and make a player get fouled. Instead, he settles for a jump shot. 
Good defense by Managa, though, to make it contested. Watch the Blue Jays. It's going to eat clock now. This is where Antoine Young's so dangerous because he can do a nice job of breaking the count. Tally playing with four fouls. Two minutes to go. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Antoine Young. High Beautiful. Antoine Young. Off the glass. 12-point Blue Jay lead. in this possession here. You bell, they got to get a shot up. 16 on the shot clock. Time is not of the essence for the Huskers. And they didn't have it in both Spencer's hands. And that's who you want to have it in times like these. He's your shooter. He's yeah. your scorer. He's your creator. See if they'll just do the same thing here with Antoine Young. Let him eat some clock and go make a play. And McCray fouls Antoine Young. Foul number zero, Tony McCray, that's his third personal foul. Antoine Young with 10 points and five assists quietly on the day. Done a good job of handling Antoine the ball, especially because Chapman, the backup point guard, really struggled this afternoon. That's where it's so nice to have a senior who has led the Missouri Valley Conference in assist to turnover ratio for two straight years. Let's assume now, with a 13-point lead, Creighton leaves the Century League Center with a win, making a 14-point lead. Doc Sadler is going to look back at this game that may be one that got away. The Huskers were down three, and he had a technical foul on McCray and a technical foul on Doc Sadler, and it changed everything. It was the turning point in the game. Absolutely. One minute to play. One minute. Spencer with the foul. Nebraska yeah, you're right. The, Spencer, Nebraska and Creighton were standing toe to toe and exchanging blows, and McCray lost his composure and got called for a technical foul. Then Doc Sadler got called with a technical foul. Creighton Antoine goes five of six from the free throw line, line in that sequence and never really looked back. And it really opened up the offense. Yeah. It started to explode offensively. Ball bouncing the right way for Antoine Young. Antoine's first free throw, good for Godfather's Pizza. 76-62. Foul on Echenique. Foul number double zero, Gregory Echenique. Doc Sadler just smiles and laughs. You got to admire the way both Spencer com competed, though, today. Really came out and made a lot of things happen. Didn't miss a shot, scored 12 points in the first half, and now going for his 23rd point. Just done a good job offensively. Creighton's a handful, though, Travis. They are every bit as good as advertised. You don't hear coaches say this a lot, but Greg McDermott was asked if he felt like his team was right at, ahead or behind where he thought they'd be, and he said that they're ahead. And I think a lot of that's because of their trip to the Bahamas yep. and able to work on some things. Nick's going to put the headset down. He's going to run over so he can talk to Greg McDermott. This will be a Creighton win as the Blue Jays getting ready to improve to 7-0 on the season. In a game that, to me, was closer than what the final score will indicate as Spencer finishes, making a 10-point game. And now it's just a matter of letting the clock tick out. The Creighton Blue Jays improved to 7-0 overall. Ranked 22nd in the country by the coaches. Just outside on the Associated Press Bowl. Expect the Blue Jays to be ranked in both polls when they come out tomorrow. 76 to 66, your final score. The home team has now won in this rivalry game the last seven matchups. Nebraska falls to 4-3 overall, 1-1 one 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 away from the Devaney Center. Doug McDermott leads the Blue Jays with 24 points, 12 rebounds. Grant Gibbs with 11 points, 6 rebounds. And how about Antoine Young? 14 points, 10 for 10 from the free throw line.
Nick Baugh standing by with Coach Greg McDermott. Nick? Coach, congrats. Talk about you guys go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, exchanging blows. Talk about first the sequence of technical fouls and what happened at the scorer's table there. Uh, you know, I'm not sure there was a technical on the floor, and obviously Doc wasn't real happy about it and wanted an explanation. And uh, uh, It's unfortunate that that kind of play would have that big of an impact on the game, but it certainly would, was it allowed us to get, our, get the crowd in the game because Nebraska did a great job of controlling the tempo of this game. Doug McDermott, 24 points, 11 rebounds, really took off in the second half with 17 points, just played great. What would you like about his game? Well, I thought that stretch when, when we had Ethan and Doug in there together, once again, uh, was able to, it's, it's tough to guard. You know, when Antoine's getting into the teeth of the defense, and I thought his play the second half was really key to the game. Antoine was outstanding. What about Grant Gibbs? Heart and soul, leader on the floor, has three steals, 11 points, made a lot of big plays. What you like about Grant today? He, he does it every game. You know, he's, he's, he's uh, we have to have him on the floor. He just made some great decisions with the ball screens in the first half and, you know, makes every right, right read. He can handle the basketball. He sees the floor. He's, we're fortunate to have him on our team. Congratulations, Coach McDermott. Good job. Thanks. Back to you, Travis. Thanks, Nick. 76-66. Nick and I will wrap things up at the Century Link Center right after this on KMTV Action 3 News. A 10-point win for the Blue Jays. Improved to 7-0 on the season. Nick Baugh. Jays now not back in action until Saturday on the road at St. Joe. They need a break. Tough game at San Diego State on Wednesday. Good win. And then this afternoon, a very hard-fought game. Credit Nebraska for coming out and making things very difficult for the Blue Jays. But ultimately, too much Doug McDermott, too much Grant Gibbs. Great win for the great Blue Jays. They'll now have a, basically a full week to recover. And they'll take on St. Joe's next Saturday afternoon. Doug McDermott with 24 points. Creighton now 7-0 on the season with a 10-point win for our entire Telepro crew here at the Century Link Center. John Stemple on graphics, Joe Haven Street on statistics. He's Nick Baugh. I'm Travis Justice. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you on the next game right here on KMTV Action 3 News.